Hi everybody, welcome to Unit 6 of CAT 125R. This week we will be discussing developing graphicacy. You've already been thinking a lot about ethos in this course, particularly as it related to your statement of purpose assignment. Uh, in that assignment, however, you were limited to using text to establish your ethos. In the assignment you're working on now, the expertise speech, you have the opportunity to establish your ethos not only through the written text you develop for your script, but also through the visual elements of your automatically advancing slides. This week in your lecture videos, Angela Kim will teach us about the relationship between visual strategies and rhetorical ethos, or as she puts it in the lecture, how graphicacy becomes the interface, the representation of your logos, ethos, and pathos. You'll also hear an interview this week from Professor Scott Klemmer, who is an expert in interface design and human-computer interaction. So let's think about some of the important elements of graphicacy. They include typography, composition, color theory, and digital standards. Did you guys think I lost it for a minute? Just kidding. Of course, I wouldn't use Comic Sans for an academic presentation. So as you see, I changed to perhaps a more traditionally used uh, font in an academic setting, in this case, Helvetica. As Danielle DeVos explains in one of your readings for this week, letter forms carry with them conventions and provide readers with important cues. The conventions suggested by the Comic Sans font and the cues it provides the reader are not really in line with typical expectations of an academic presentation. So thinking about some of the objectives for your Ignite speech, and in particular, the introduction of your Ignite speech. You want to get the attention and interest of your audience, reveal the topic of your speech, and establish credibility and goodwill, and you also want to preview the body of your speech. So let's talk about how to accomplish some of these goals, and we'll do so by looking at some former student examples. So some strategies for the introduction to help you get the attention and interest of your audience. You want to find a way to relate the topic to your audience, we talked about last week in our last week's video uh, that you have the opportunity with this speech to really know your audience because it's a fairly limited audience uh, and it's a group of people who you've been working with for the past several weeks, your section mates, of course. You also want to state the importance of your topic, arouse the curiosity of your audience. Uh, you might ask a question of the audience or tell a story. So here's an introductory slide from a previous student's expertise speech. The presentation began with this rather ominous looking slide that says, what is this silent killer? The student explained an epidemic that was uh, extremely dangerous to our nation's health. If you begin your presentation with an introduction like this one, a sort of dramatic introduction, you want to make sure that you're not so caught up in gaining your audience's attention that you forget to clearly state the topic of your speech. So in the example we just looked at with the, who is, the what is this silent killer, the student quickly went on to reveal that the killer he was discussing is in fact something as innocuous seeming as sitting for extended periods of time. You also want to make sure to establish your credibility in the introduction of your speech. So here's a sample from a student who gave her presentation on strategies for selecting a restaurant with a large group of friends. And she had this slide early in her presentation, which included images of her dining all over the world, as well as the logo from the food website where she contributed as a writer. Here's another example from a student who gave a presentation on inexpensive and temporary ways to decorate a dorm room. So this student established his credibility by showing slides uh, of images he had taken, uh, photographs he had taken himself of projects he completed. So here's a photograph 
of his own room, a photograph of him actively working on a project, painting a mural in this case, and another humorous decoration project he worked on with hanging pot chips all over his friend's room, sort of half prank, half decoration. Another thing you want to think about when addressing your own credibility in your speech uh, are strategies for citing sources. So even though this is a spoken presentation, you're still held to the same standards that you're used to with written text. Any idea that is not your own needs to be cited both in your script and in your spoken presentation. However, it's in a spoken presentation, it's usually not uh, very effective to give extended quotations. So you wanna think about strategies that are useful in the spoken presentation. You can use signal phrases, right? something like according to, uh, a recent study conducted, concluded. You can also take advantage of the visual medium of your slides. So back to that uh, example we looked at earlier about sitting, the dangers of sitting. That student discussed a study produced from the Mayo Clinic. So one of his slides included uh, this logo from the Mayo Clinic. He also included a screen grab from PubMed of the specific study he was referencing. So here, uh, this slide is not intended to be read in detail by the audience, right? The, the text here is really working as a graphic showing that this student accessed a particular academic study. So that's something you want to be aware of in your creation of your own slides. As a general rule, you want them to rely primarily on images uh, because they move so quickly that if you use a text-heavy slide, your audience is just not going to have time to read it, and their attempt to read it is going to distract them from your own speech. So while the use of visual material in your PowerPoint slides can allow you to uh, make some very effective moves in your presentation, the PowerPoint format can also be limiting. So if we think about, uh, if we take a more critical stance on PowerPoint, we have here a quotation from Ian Parker from an article called Absolute PowerPoint in which he says, the usual metaphor for everyday software is the tool, but that doesn't seem to be right here. PowerPoint is more like a suit of clothes or a car or plastic surgery. You take it out with you. You are judged by it. You insist on being judged by it. So the visual medium of an Ignite presentation can open you up to some pitfalls as well. So I want to talk about some of those so that you're sure to avoid them as you begin working on your speech and your slides. So PowerPoint, as you know, has several pre-designed templates. If you use any of these pre-designed templates, you want to make sure you're selecting one that is really in keeping with uh, the context of your speech, with the topic of your speech, and the tone of your speech. So this rather ornate uh, template could be effective for some topics, uh, but less effective for others. So for example, if you are presenting on your findings uh, in laboratory research, such an ornate slide doesn't quite seem like an appropriate visual match and could be distracting for your audience and could also uh, undermine your credibility. You also want to try to create your own images whenever possible. So here we have uh, two examples of clip art, right? Sort of generic images. Uh, you also could hear this referred to as stock images. Generic images that weren't created for any particular purpose. They were just created for users to adapt to their own needs. So I'd encourage you to avoid using clip art because of this decontextualized nature. Uh, Ideally, you'll be generating your own images whenever possible. This could be photographs, like the example we saw from the student who uh, discussed dorm room decoration. It could be the creation of your own chart or graph if you are working on material that is effectively presented using that kind of method. 
if you are using images that you've pulled online, you want to make sure that they are relevant to your topic um, and that that relevance is clear to your audience. So you don't want to have an image just because it's vaguely related to your topic, right? You have so few slides really for this project. You want to make sure that each one is really helping you advance your message and support your claims that you're making in the speech. As our other clip art friend here says, you want to also, of course, avoid hard to read fonts. So we discussed uh, typography a little bit earlier in this video in terms of the message that a particular font can send to your audience, but you also just want to think in terms of clarity. So using something that's difficult to read will be distracting to your audience as they are trying to uh, trying to figure out what exactly is going on in a slide. As I said earlier, these slides move really quickly, so you want to think about designing them in such a way that really all your audience needs to do is take a quick glance and understand the message of the slide. So to conclude, effective Ignite Style PowerPoint slides will complement or extend the speaker's point, meaning that whatever's on your slide is going to be directly related to or extending what it is you're saying while that slide is on the screen. Your slides are not going to compete for your audience's attention. We've talked about some things that might distract your audience, things like overly crowded slides, slides with a lot of text, slides that are difficult to decipher. You want to rely more on images than text. So something that uh, the audience can scan quickly uh, often a single image is most effective with an Ignite style presentation. And you saw that in the samples that you looked at for your Piazza post where you did the rhetorical analysis of three Ignite style presentations. Good luck with your creation of your slides, your selection of your images, and your work on your scripts. I will say, as I do every week, I'm always happy to talk with you about your projects in office hours. I've really enjoyed speaking to several of you in office hours about your statements of purpose, and I am looking forward to doing the same with your speeches. Have a great week, and I'll see you on Piazza.